Good afternoon, everyone. I am Orko Andhrapadhe, research associate uh, in solid state and structural chemistry unit of IISC. Here I work in a very active theory and computation of materials group led by Professor Audes Narayan. And there as a team, we are uh, mainly uh, interested in a very exciting uh, research problem starting from uh, uh, exploring the topological uh, phases of material, including the magnetic uh, topological insulators, where we study the uh, like topological phase defect of this topological phase transition in the anomalous uh, Hall conductivity. Uh, we also uh, work uh, in the non-Hermitian uh, topology region. Uh, for example, uh, here uh, our group uh, have uh, developed a formalism uh, uh, to address the uh, so-called exceptional point, higher order exceptional point, uh, starting from the non-Hermitian Hamiltonian by writing the only the character, uh, characteristic equation uh, of that. And uh, another uh, important concept uh, related to the Berry curvature dipole uh, that I am uh, more inclined to. And uh, in this presentation, I shall try to discuss uh, our uh, recent work on this uh, Berry curvature uh, dipole. Uh, that uh, Nesta, me, and uh, Professor Narayan has recently uh, looked at. So uh, my outline uh, will be to introduce this uh, Berry curvature dipole uh, from well-known Berry phase, and uh, followed by some uh, recent experimental uh, reports on uh, Berry curvature uh, dipole. And then I shall discuss our work on buckled honeycomb uh, lattices and to show uh, how uh, we can get large Berry curvature dipole from uh, these uh, buckled uh, systems. And uh, I'll uh, conclude my talk by discussing the uh, summary of the entire uh, presentation. So we know when uh, we have a uh, time uh, dependent Hamiltonian, uh, like this Hamiltonian depends on a parameter which is uh, slowly uh, varying in time. And uh, the Hamiltonian is periodic uh, in time. Then we ask a question that uh, what happens to the wave function? It, uh, it appears that uh, the wave function gains a phase. And the first term of the phase is a uh, very trivial. It comes because of the time dependent uh, Schrodinger equation. And the second term is a very important, uh, which depends only on the uh, contour, uh, this contour, and is uh, known as a geometric phase or uh, the uh, Berry phase. So when we have a phase, we can always uh, compare uh, it with some uh, from the concept of electromagnetic theory. We can think of a vector potential and a corresponding magnetic field that gives rise to the uh, this phase. And this magnetic field-like term is basically uh, the Berry curvature in this parameter space. So when we have a periodic system, k is a good quantum number, and uh, we can refer this Berry curvature as a magnetic field in the momentum space. So just to uh, understand the effect of uh, Berry curvature in our uh, real uh, system. So we can think of a uh, Hall effect where we apply a perpendicular magnetic uh, field uh, and uh, passes uh, uh, like uh, current uh, through the sample. And then we get a transverse voltage, which is a linear in the, uh, in the magnetic field. So uh, we expect like when we uh, reduce the magnetic field to zero, then the uh, uh, Hall voltage should be zero, but this not, uh, I mean, always this is not true. Because uh, for uh, some uh, ferromagnetic ordering in the system, we can sometimes have the anomalous uh, Hall effect. And uh, uh, for this uh, Hall effect to occur, we uh, then understand that we have to apply the magnetic field or we need to have some magnetic ordering in the system. And what is more exciting is that when we consider the uh, high mobility sample and we uh, talk about the uh, low temperature region with high, uh, uh, high magnetic field, we uh, get these plateaus in the transverse voltage, which is uh, 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 in the uh, conductivity. So this is very interesting. In order to explain these uh, flat regions, uh, Halden first introduced uh, his model where he just uh, broke the time reversal asymmetry in the system and uh, showed that uh, yeah this is enough to uh, to explain uh, this uh, this um, quantum anomalous Hall effect and this is the first time like we can or or maybe this is uh, the time when we can relate this uh, concept of electronic uh, properties with uh, our uh, concept of uh, topology uh, for example Berry curvature uh, in the system so we have seen that uh, this Berry curvature is uh, in case space is similar to the magnetic magnetic field in real space. So when we talk about time reversal symmetry condition, it is odd function. 
So as this is odd function, if we take the uh, integration of this um, uh, this uh, function all over the Brillier zone, then we will get uh, a zero value. So this is why we do not uh, get any uh, like Hall or conduction when we talk about this time reversal uh, symmetric condition. So the question uh, has been asked at a very uh, fundamental level that can we observe Hall response when uh, we are in the time reversal asymmetric uh, condition? So. Uh, Sodeman and Pooh answered uh, this question in a very positive way that yes, we can have a Hall effect even in the time reversal symmetry condition. For that, first we need to break the inversion symmetry of the system because we are in the time reversal symmetry condition. So this is already an odd function. And if we do not break the inversion symmetry, it will be simultaneously even function. So even an odd function simultaneously can only possible when the function itself is zero for the non so for the non zero value of a very curvature we need to break the inversion symmetry and if we break the inversion symmetry just we have to remember that we are still in the time reversal uh, symmetry condition so this integration will be zero so for that we need to apply some in plane electric field so that we can shift this fermi sphere so the contribution from this part of the sphere is not equal equivalent to this part of the so we are basically affecting this distribution function here so when we disturb this distribution function we are assi we assign different weightage to this uh, this uh, berry curvature and now the integration will uh, not be a zero but what is more interesting in this case is that when we simultaneously like disturb this distribution function and break the inversion symmetry we get a non linear uh, dependency of current on a, a voltage but in usual hall effect we expect a linear uh, dependency so to explain this non linear hall effect that we have observed in the time reversal symmetry condition we have seen that berry curvature is not enough we need to introduce a more refined quantity that is known as the berry curvature dipole so this is basically a, a, like when these berry curvature are segregated at two different k point then we get a dipole moment from negative to a positive berry curvature direction so recently uh, starting from 2019 onward there are uh, some interesting experimental evidences of this uh, berry curvature dipole and nonlinear hall effect but uh, we have uh, the observed that only a handful of materials uh, uh, show a uh, very curvature dipole and even if some show very curvature dipole the values are not uh, very large uh, so that uh, we need a sophisticated experimental setup in order to realize this nonlinear effect so our goal in this project uh, is to find out materials that can show giant and tunable very curvature dipole so for that we have focused uh, on these uh, elementary uh, like uh, buckled two dimensional honeycomb lattices and uh, our uh, like motivation was this is the elemental two dimensional system and uh, we have a very narrow band gap for this system so we expect a, a large berry curvature associated to the, that uh, narrow band gap and there is a possibility of uh, breaking of inversion symmetry because because of this buckling electric field will assign different mass term to these neighboring uh, neighboring uh, atoms and then uh, we we can like uh, break the inversion symmetry and in addition to that this electric field will lead us lead the system from topologically non trivial to topologically trivial so we have a topological phase transition uh, at, at this point so we want to explore the topological phase uh, uh, effect of this uh, topological phase transition on the berry curvature dipole and finally uh, these systems are experimentally uh, re realizable so apart from doing like uh, choosing this system and doing uh, the calculation associated with this berry curvature dipole we uh, have seen that uh, there is no berry curvature dipole uh, in this system so then uh, to understand this uh, we have studied the crystal symmetry of the system and it turns out that the crystal symmetry of this uh, of these systems are uh, like uh, are protecting the zero value of of a berry curvature dipole because we know that these systems has a d3 symmetry uh, so uh, basically there is a c3 symmetry uh, in this system so uh, let's reduce the symmetry uh, a bit so uh, how we can uh, reduce the symmetry we can apply uniaxial strain to the system so when we apply uniaxial strain we essentially break this c3 symmetry and and some other uh, planes so only symmetry in this uh, structure is the mx plane and now we studied uh, the uh, berry curvature it turns out that this system uh, like uh, this strain 
perturbs the distribution that f function uh, i told in the previous slide and uh, now uh, th this uh, very curvature is not uniform but we we can have some asymmetric very curvature and we apply strain in such a way that we do not break the fundamental thing that the electric field driven topological phase transition in the system so we still have the topological phase transition in this trained uh, 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 hexagonal honeycomb lattices and uh, so we are uh, like uh, uh, set to start our uh, calculations on uh, the very uh, curvature uh, uh, dipole so we observe a large uh, peak uh, near the fermi level uh, uh, near the fermi level of these uh, of all these systems and uh, when we look uh, the magnitude here it is extremely a uh, large value for uh, both the systems as when uh, we are near this topological critical point so these values are very large so we can just uh, compare it with uh, with dichalcogenides so uh, the, here it is like only a uh, angstrom uh, in like few angstrom but it is a uh, very large uh, uh, very curvature dipole and another interesting uh, thing is that this flipping of the sign of this very curvature dipole and this uh, flipping uh, is basically because of uh, like this uh, flipping of uh, very curvature uh, in the uh, topological non trivial and uh, topological uh, trivial phase so we have uh, seen that uh, we have achieved yeah, electrically a uh, switchable giant very curvature dipole for these uh, strained buckle uh, honeycomb uh, lattices in two dimensions so we have uh, seen that uh, when we have a buckled uh, honeycomb uh, system and uh, we can uh, apply electric field and strain so simultaneous effect of this strain and electric field is uh, sufficient to um, uh, to induce a, a, a very curvature dipole in the system and this very curvature dipole has very interesting nonlinear uh, hall effect uh, which is uh, which is very important from uh, from basic science point of view not only that it has very interesting application aspects uh, as well like uh, it is very useful in the terahertz detectors and uh, some radio uh, frequency harvesting and uh, some other Uh, applications that people are recently uh, trying to uh, try, trying to uh, get using this nonlinear uh, response so uh, we use the density functional theory tight binding model and uh, some symmetry based indicators uh, to calculate these uh, very curvature dipole in our system and uh, our results uh, so that uh, near this critical point we have a very large very curvature dipole and which changes its sign when going from a topological non trivial phase to topologically trivial phase so thank you very much uh, for your uh, attention thank you uh, questions so oh, thank you uh, one question is can the addition of dopants to these materials change the very curvature and does it have any practical applications to add dopants here actually uh, we like uh, for some minor doping it is, as we are talking about the topological uh, state of the system so it is bit robust the nature is little bit robust so we can dope uh, like uh, in the system to check whether the gap is very narrow because we we are we, we want to calculate the very curvature and it is inversely proportional to the band gap of the system so if we apply like dopant or other thing so the gap may increase so when we have a large band gap system we do not get a uh, very curvature but yes for for few like uh, few doping it is robust its nature is, is robust because of the topological protection manish yes sir I have a quick question about how do you actually calculate the di Berry curvature dipole? I mean, I understand how the Berry curvature is calculated. Yes. How do you compute is, the dipole? It is actually uh, the derivative uh, of that uh, in uh, of that Berry curvature dipole with respect to the uh, with, uh, with with respect to kx actually, or here in in this case, yeah. So it is it is actually it is basically uh, some uh, derivative of some some first moment of the Berry curvature. This is actually. Okay, if uh, then Manish, you okay with that? Okay, so uh, thank you, and we'll go on to the last talk of this session.